Hi, I'm Chris Hayes from Sunday Funday Films. And I'm Stephen Durham from Second Nature Films. I'm Lee Fanaraj from Untethered Productions. And we're from the movie Head Game. Watch us on the spiel. I'm here today and all I hear is how I'm chasing crazy dreams. They'll see, cause I've got perfect songs and melodies just waiting to come out of me. And you'll sing along like a Fancy words, clever lines and tales that take you back in time And you'll sing along like a woe And they'll know Everyone will know They should have believed in me Should have believed, baby You're watching The Spiel and you're watching the spiel. I am glad they're watching the spiel. And we're getting more viewership by the minute. Yeah? Yes. Because we're what? All over the country now? We're all over the country, all over the time. The globe. The globe. We're yeah. all over. We're at 7 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Well, yeah. That uh, I don't know if you saw that. That was in this television market. Um, okay. The truth be known, we're in five states. Shh. Don't say Right that. now. But you know what? We're, we're working towards increasing that number significantly. And you know how you do that? How, Angie? <sighs> Increased viewership. Yes. 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 What does that mean? That means getting more viewers. Right. Those people right there watching. Yes. What do we need from them? We need your eyes <laughs> and a good watch on your arm to remember when we come on and watch us yes. correctly. Yes. We need you to watch. We need you to share. We need you to spread the word. That's right. Yes. Tell everyone you know. And what's really cool now, as we talked before. Yes. I love it when someone comes up to me and says, the spiel. The spiel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's how it's done. You know what it means to go viral, right? Have you, you yes. heard of that? Yes. What does that mean? That means like um, something cute, something interesting that everybody around the country sees. Oh, back to that. You remember the dress? What was it? Gold and blue or black and that one. Yeah. Yeah. What did you ridiculous. think it was real quick? I can't remember. I didn't. I was comment. black and blue. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Well, one of our own, listen to this, Jason texted me this week and said, hey, Mama Soros, yes. you know, our DIY tips mm -hmm. and tricks expert, she's been on hiatus for a little bit because she's, you know, giving birth, mm -hmm. all she that beautiful works. Yeah, beautiful children, beautiful children. But I guess one of her segments, um, it was the canvas, the photo canvas, okay, like 100,000 views, like that. Wow. Yeah. You know why? Why? Some, was it, a, it was a newspaper in San Diego, correct? Yep. Okay, newspaper in San Diego got a hold of it, shared the link, all of a sudden, pow, 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 everybody's liking, everybody's sharing, everybody's just, I mean, it's, it's nuts. Which makes me worried. This makes me worried Why? when I hear stuff like this, because she's ours. Will she be on our show again? I mean, is it really We're gotten... hoping she takes us with her. Oh, well, I see. Yes. Well, I was thinking she yes. didn't know us anymore. Whoever gets there first has to take everybody else with them. Okay. I mean, because we have a lot of baggage. Yes, we do. I mean, a lot. Look around the room. Yeah, and you, if you get one, you get them all. <laughs> that's right. I mean, we can't, we can't split it off. We can't separate. No. Maybe that's why we haven't syndicated. Because you know what happens when you syndicate. They say, okay, the redhead is magnificent, the blonde goes. And I can't have that. That'd be sad for me. I know you would love it. We've talked about it. This I would Julie. love it. Please she would love it. Me. But it's not going to happen. I know. No, They'll take you every time. Oh, The blonde whatever. always gets the gigs. Whatever. Yeah. The boys, the gigs, the blonde. Is that not right? Dude, Girls? we interviewed somebody this week, and the guy's like, oh, I'm a fan of brunettes. I'm like, really? He said that because oh, yeah. Rachel was standing there. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. All right. Fan of brunettes. Yes. Well, I'm a fan of the show, so we're going to get right in. We've got a lot of cool guests coming up. Let's go. Coming up on the spiel. Okay, go. Jag vet inte vad du tror att jag ska säga om det. Do you know? I know what she said. I know what she said. What you got all over your blue shirt? Well, I am burned. Ladies burning. I chose Three Rivers College to get the skills I need for success in early childhood education, civil and construction, firefighting, welding, accounting, paramedic, drafting, environmental safety, nursing, physical therapist assistant, medical laboratory technology, network administration, forestry, criminal justice, ag technology, business management, industrial technology, IST legal, diesel mechanics, Three Rivers College, success starts here. 
Since the very beginning, Southside Lumber has been a family business, delivering lumber and materials from a storefront in Heron, Illinois. Some things never change. We're still family owned and still located in the same place. Now, delivering more than just lumber to every corner of Southern Illinois. With nearly 70 years experience building Southern Illinois, come see why people in the know go to Southside. Find us on social media and follow us for the next 70 years. More than just lumber, Southside Lumber. Explore an ever-expanding variety of wholesome, locally grown foods when you shop Illinois, where fresh is. For more information, visit IllinoisWhereFreshIs.com. Check out my website at HealthyHippieChef.com, where you can find all you need to know about fresh and local, where to get it, how to get it onto your table, and into your family's bellies. Welcome back to the spiel. Sometimes opportunities just fall in our lap. Knock at the door. This yeah. is one of them right here. You know, Ben Affleck. He, uh, Affleck. Bond girl? It ain't Affleck. 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 We're getting Affleck. 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 No, we're going with this one. We're going with You can this. say buddy with Ben Affleck. Take, you know, Ben, we're going with this one, okay? Take, take three. You know, they, no, no, we're going on. What? I love this. <laughs> yes. No, this is going. Okay. It's so Julie. We'll we're fix going. Post. So what happens is they come and they do a little couple scenes yes. at Giant City State yes. Park. Yes, They yes. went to Cape Girardeau and did some huh. scenes. Yes. We have a new movie filming right here. Well, part of it. A piece of it in Southern Illinois. Okay. Actually, Metropolis. Ooh. And I'd like to welcome all these good looking you actresses. You can just tell. These are Hollywood yeah. types. Look at them. Look, Look at, at them. Teeth. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I love it. That's Let's get their names talk. real quick. I'm Sammy Anthony. Tell us a little about who you want to be in. Um, I featured on uh, the show Modern Family. I was on I'm Alive and Flash Forward for a minute. But uh, I'm hmm. the, uh, the lead of uh, a film produced and directed by Stephen Durham called The Butchers. And Abby Grace, directed by uh, Stephen Jod. Okay, which leads us right into Stephen. Yes. I can't say your name as cool as he did, but you know. Okay. Cool. Hi, I'm Stephen Paul Jod, and I am a director nice. and a writer. You know, I love people like you. The things that you guys create anymore and you put it on the screen, I, I think we're entertaining crowds now at a level that we never have before. In your world, are you always trying to one up the next guy? You know, I just try to make what I want to see. You know, I really don't try to care about what anyone else is doing. You know? I so I work as an artist and a writer and a director. So I just really try to make things that I want to personally see. Right. And I feel like if you make something that you love, someone else will gravitate to it. Amen. You know, good. Stephen, this one here is called Head Game. Right. Uh, have you done another film like this before? Or is this something new? No, we did, um, just did a, I directed a feature called The Butchers. And you can get that. That sounds nice. iTunes, IMDb, <laughs> Amazon, if you want to check it out. Shameless. Yeah, so, and then we just uh, wrapped around, we shot another film in another, where, where did we shoot uh, Abby Grace at? It was uh, somewhere in. Marion, wasn't it? Benton. New Benton. 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 New, in New Hamburg, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was also a thriller, and I produced on that one. A thriller? Wait a second. You're one yeah. of those sick minds, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you huh? Yes, and it had my <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, coming on around. Well, you got a microphone, Chris. I do, I do. Angie, Julie, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on. You? You've got a big uh, resume. Tell us about that. Uh, I got a chance to be a part of the Divergent series. I was in the, is that what you're talking about mm -hmm. a little bit? I was in uh, yeah, the first uh, Divergent movie, which was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. That whole series is. It is, yeah. I got a chance to shoot with Ashley Judd and Shalene Woodley. Ashley yeah. Judd, she's just right in our neck of the She's woods. a local, yeah. Kentucky she's a big girl. Wildcat fan. Yes, she's yeah. always at the games. Now, is this your first thriller? Uh, I've done a couple in the past. Uh, there, was a, there was a paranormal activity one that I did. Uh, yes. A couple of years back, and I played a, a paranormal investigator, and we were in an abandoned hospital investigating ghosts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was it fun? It was a blast because the place was really haunted. It wasn't hard to act. There was no acting in that. I bet. And this beautiful lady, last but not least. Hi, Lee von Ulrich. What? See, yeah. I just yeah. said. That's <laughs> I'll, I'll right simplify. Now. Lee von Ulrich. That's a little bit easier. And how do you say it then? Say it again. Leave, like leave the room. Uh -huh. Von oh. Ulrich. It means life in Swedish. My Isn't like an Ulrich a sweeper? What, what is that? <laughs> vacuum. What's the vacuum thing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kind of, I digress a lot. Have you noticed? No, no, no. Anything that helps me uh, explain my name <laughs> is very helpful. I'll just take it and use it later. Tell us some of the stuff you've been in. 
Um, I was in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the American version, because yeah. I'm originally from Sweden, and so I put on a Swedish accent and uh, did some of the voiceovers for that. And then uh, I was on Masters of Sex on Showtime, the first oh, season. Oh, well, how, yeah. <laughs> Masters of Sex on Showtime. Very nice, yes. sister. Mm -hmm. So, oh. how long have you been in our area? Was you born and raised here? I mean, in the I, States. Um, I actually moved to Huntsville, Alabama when I was seven. And I grew up in Huntsville, and then I went to college in Birmingham, which I love Birmingham. And then I moved out to L.A. seven years ago. Now, you know you're talking Angie's neck of the woods. You know what, Alabama, baby? The, the closeness to the heart. Yes, we got Dothan in the room. I mean, this is yes, fantastic. I mean, this feels good. This yeah. feels good, absolutely. You know there's talent from Alabama. I mean, so you're getting Absolutely. it. You're getting it done. But I would like to hear in your native tongue um, maybe the most riveting line that you had when you were playing that the, the part. Just give me, like, turn it on here. Act, not actress. from the sex movie. But yes, not that. One. Yeah. Because our children are watching. We're gonna keep it G, guys. <laughs> okay, go. Do you know what I know what she said. <gasps> I know what she said. Well, what you got all over your blue shirt? <laughs> What did you say? Bravo. I don't know what you think you're saying. Oh, oh I was I convinced. Made, I, wasn't, I didn't think that you would make me actually say it. I just made yeah, something yeah. up. Yeah. Nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that right there. Good that life. was amazing. Good. That was amazing. Okay, now, where are we, Chris, in like filming Head Game? Are we halfway through? We're just starting? No, starting? We're, we're just starting. So technically it's uh, pre-production right now. Okay. So we're actually going to go up from here over to the gigantic massive warehouse complex we're shooting in. Mm -hmm. And the place I saw the pictures of that. Yeah. Oh, that looks scary just looking at the inside yeah. of that. Now you said pre-production. Are there times when you all get involved in a, in a movie and that takes money? Have you ever just said, you know what, this one's not going to work, and you walk away, or do you always finish your projects? Uh, more often than not, well, you, the, you the, the former. Yeah, well, okay. no, it's, it's, it's harder. Uh, it's tough to get people to, to invest in movies a lot of the time sure. because they're kind of a risky investment, but there's so much fun to be had for it, yeah. and you end up, if you do it the right way, into making a, a serious return on your there investment. There you go. I, I love to see these movies that are um, spending very little to produce and then just smashing it at the box. That's the thing. I'd love to see that too. Yes. 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 Absolutely. When are we expecting the uh, premiere? We should have it done. We actually have our editor on set actually cutting the movie as we're shooting. Nice. So it wow. speeds the whole process up. And we'll probably have it done in August. Okay. okay. Yeah. For you, just a, just a little sampling if, if a Walking Dead viewer is listening or tuned in right now would they happen to like what you're doing is there some zombie okay they would okay. love it they would love it okay. they would love it yeah, yeah. There's, there's plenty of there's plenty of uh, thrills I mean these guys are masters at the craft so they know exactly what audience members want sick mind. that's why you hire someone who loves the genre yeah, yeah. you know they all, the ones with the sick mind always have the greatest smiles yeah <laughs> <laughs> I work on a Disney show as a writer so I don't want to talk about that that's yeah. cool yeah I wrote on a uh, television show called Zeke and Luther it's on Disney XD. Stop There's it. An episode called A Very Hairy Problem on iTunes. <laughs> 99 cents. Be shameless, Sydney. <laughs> Download <laughs> today. Yes, yes, yes. So that was a good time. So. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot and maybe this can happen. Okay. Can you give us like a, is there any dialogue between any of you here that you can just kind of give us a line or two? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it yeah, may not make sure. sense, but we can kind of what the movie's about. Please do. Please do. Basically, I'll let Chris, he's probably more... Oh, okay. They'll let you, Chris. They'll let you. I directed it over to Chris. Yeah, yeah. Camera two. You can't just offer up things and then, oh, here comes a bus, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so, Head Game, which is singular because we haven't made the sequel yet, of course, Head Games. Head Game is about a group of strangers that go to an all-night party and they wake up the next day and they have cameras attached to their heads. So they're really quickly wondering, how do they get in this position? They don't have much of a memory of the last night. We've all been there. And it comes, uh, it comes to find out that a bunch of sadistic socialites, these rich people, are betting on them, like World Series of Poker. Uh -huh. And they're seeing who's going to survive. And there's only one key, one door, one exit, one survivor. Wow. So when, when the group went to the warehouse, it was just going to be a party. And yeah. there was more than one ex uh, entrances. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But when they wake up, things have changed. Oh, you're locked in, and if, uh, if you try to remove the camera, really bad things happen. Your face melts. Stop! <laughs> oh, that was your idea, wasn't it? No. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's traps, and there's, uh, there's, we, we have uh, a whole pallet maze that they have to go through, so there's death lurking around every corner. 
Watch, Watch out for it. this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again so Thank much for coming so by. Yeah, Absolutely. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to point out that we didn't ask yeah. you about before you go? No, we covered it. No, thank you we, so we much. We want to for thank everyone for the hospitality here. Yes. It's been really great, especially locally. Anything we've ever needed, people just go above and beyond. We appreciate it, and thanks for having us on your show. Nice. Yeah. yeah, a little nicer than those folks out in Hollywood, <laughs> yeah. right? In LA, yeah, they're our kind of people. There so. you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be right back. And we just went to the backyard, all of us, and we gathered around this big backyard, and there was a bunch of old folks, and, and sorry if you're an old folk, but um, Those old folk I wasn't know how looking to cook. at you when I said that. Oh my, uh, did you see? He was looking I, at me. It was I, me today. You wasn't at me, was No, he wasn't. It was, it was me. It was provide the facilities in the areas that are most needed. The doctors here are very caring. It's, it's not just the kid that you treat, it's the whole entire family. It doesn't matter how much you have or what you don't have. We will find a place and, and a way to take care of you. We do work closely with some drug manufacturing companies to help provide um, patients with medications that they otherwise could not afford. Take care of you the best we can. We are community-based, community-served, and we take community pride in what we do. I'd like to first of all thank everybody for coming on this historic anniversary of the bank opening April the 7th at 1 o'clock in 1915. God willing, we're going to be here for another 100 years and serving the community and we're commemorating that today. Your needs are our call to action. God bless you all. 100 years. 32 years old, I want to be in the wheelhouse by the time I'm 35. When I first started, I worked in the fleet down there in Cairo. Moved up, maybe a year, two months after that, I moved to lead man. Something different. <laughs> Let's see, you get up in the morning, you lay down in the afternoon, you get up in the, in the evening and get <laughs> lay down in the morning. The ultimate job is to get that captain title. Their motto is be safe. Every now and again, you get safety bonuses. It's a very rewarding job. Makes you appreciate your time at home a little bit more. And that'll make sure that you know you get home and get back on the boat. I have a partial venture that drives me crazy, so I'd like to get something permanent. Uh, one of the most dramatic advances in implant dentistry is the introduction of what's called computer-guided surgery. Because when we have a guide, uh, the surgery is much quicker and it's more conservative. No sutures, there's no bleeding. Quicker recovery, no pain. And happier patient. And happier doctor, too. It's going to mean everything. We always have to keep our eyes open because we never know where we're going to get that inspiration from. We are excited to bring Orbe to Chavot. Orbe uses exclusive essential oils. That's what helps to separate them from other products. Maybe their hair has been over-processed or they have split ends. We have a product that will repair split ends 94%. You will get unbelievable shine. You can find Orbe at Chavot Salon in front of the Williamson County Airport. find out more about the spiel or even watch past episodes, visit spieleon.com. You know, thank you so much for watching the spiel. The thing with this show is we never know what we're going to get. You know, we have different people setting up different segments. And it was interesting, this next gentleman, Bill Rechtenwald, we had uh, one big note out beside your name, Tsunami Survivor. Did you know that you were here as a tsunami survivor? I, I think it was one of the things that was mentioned. Okay. And um, uh, that, that was kind of a life-changing thing for me. Yeah. Can we start there? I know sure. you have a lot going on in your life we want to get to, but let's start there. Sure. I was on, uh, I was, uh, on a holiday in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. uh, which is that beautiful uh, island south uh, tip of India, mm -hmm. in, uh, 10 years ago, a little bit over 10 years ago. I'd been there before. Uh, with the School of Journalism at SIU, uh, we had a contract with this Department of State, the US, U.S. State Department, to do training of journalists, and I, I wanted to go back and visit this beautiful place. Mm -hmm. And I was having breakfast at a lovely little hotel, just gotten a brand new uh, digital camera. A funky wave came up onto the shore, very far onto shore. I thought it was a rogue wave. I snapped a picture, then I snapped another picture when another wave came very quickly. 
And within about 30 seconds, I had my, stuffed the camera in my pocket. I was standing on, a, on something, holding on to a, to a post. And waves were around my waist. And another few seconds, they were over my head. It pulled me off. It, it knocked my glasses off. And when I went to re hold my glasses on, I lost hold to the post. And I was floating around in the parking lot with a bunch of cars that were floating, oh. people screaming, walls collapsing. Was there a warning no. before you had that? Yeah. There was none. No. None. And it, uh, my photos were date and time stamped, mm -hmm. 55 seconds between having breakfast and being in 18 feet of water. Oh. Now, I guess you had an incredible camera that survived this water. Uh, the card survived it and the okay. camera didn't. Just as quickly the water went out uh, and people began to uh, try to assess damage. And sure. Several people at the hotel had died. Um, people that I had met the night before were dead. And, uh, yeah. um, we were evacuated uh, by, by bus. We did not know what happened. We, we had no idea of what had happened. This, the word tsunami was not in my vocabulary. Right. And uh, uh, we, we were missing one little girl. We couldn't find her anywhere. And we thought, uh, uh, this was a family that, uh, this was the day after Christmas, that we had had Christmas uh, uh, with. We thought we'd lost her. And uh, as they were evacuating us on the back of a truck in the higher, higher country, we, uh, uh, we're passing a little rural hospital, and one of the uh, one of her sisters screams, "There's Esther!" Oh my! And sure enough, um, two of the boys from the hotel hotel workers had grabbed her from the water and ran inland, took her to the hospital. Oh! They handed her up, and uh, uh, there wasn't a dry eye on the back of that truck. Oh, I bet. In fact, it's even yeah. today yes. is, is a when, touching thing. When you go through something like this, um, I would imagine that it changes the overview of your life. Yes. And to be a journalist and to be a storyteller, how did your story change that day? Well, to be a, to be a storyteller, first of all, when I got to a place where I would, was able to get in touch with the outside world, I didn't realize that this was a monumental event that had taken 250,000 lives in a matter of, of, of just a few hours that had crossed all of South uh, Asia. Mm. But I, I did have a, a, a series of emails uh, from my old employer. I was only gone for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, first saying, I uh, want to know, how you doing? Are you OK? And then, damn it, call. Yes. Uh, yes. And they said, send us a story. I said, you're going to find this hard to believe, but I wasn't taking notes. And they said, just write what happened. So I wrote a story for the Tribune you know, about my experience, a first-hand story, which mm -hmm. normally we don't write first-hand right. uh, stories. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I told that story, and it was uh, a pretty compelling story. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess what, what, uh, what moved me so much was the, the care that was given to me by the Sri Lankan people, who mm -hmm. are very generally very poor. Mm -hmm. um, they were concerned that we were safe. Um, in, in going back from where we were to Colombo, the capital, 90 miles, it took like nine hours. We were on a little narrow highway. Mm. Nobody ever screamed at each other, get out of the way, move, do this. You know, I'm from right. Chicago. I'm right. from a place where they shoot each other over, or, sure. over a parking Tennis space shoes. in snow. Sure. In snow. And people were really nice to us. People would be giving us the thumbs up and concerned about our, our good health. I went back there in four months to, to visit and, and saw the remarkable uh, progress that was being made. Just in four months? In four months. Yeah. Wow. Because from the day of the event, people immediately began to try to get their lives together. Sure. When your resilience is tested, absolutely. Right. Um, a writer for Chicago Tribune, how did that story stack up to all of those you had done before? I mean, you obviously covered some very important events and, and, and such as that. Is that the one that always takes precedence, or is there another that you always speak of, your experience? Well, there, there's a number of other stories I've done and series that I've done. A, a couple of them have been received some very high honors. Mm -hmm. Two of them received the Pulitzer Prize, which is a very high honor for wow. journalists. Yeah. That little and, known and, Pulitzer Prize, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, the, uh, uh, 
But but this this is a, a deeply personal one sure, because sure. of the fact that I, I got to know so so many people. I've been back to Sri Lanka several times, and mm -hmm. and the the young man who carried my bags from the hotel to make because my my hotel room was okay. I was on the fifth floor, but I was having uh, uh, breakfast at uh, at uh, ground level. Mm. But who carried my bags away? I mean, I know him now. I know his family. I was wow. there when he had his first uh, uh, child. The wow. day that he had his first child, and he insisted I go to the hospital Isn't that with something? him. It was it was interesting to go to a, to a third world hospital. Oh yeah. Forty eight beds in a room, and I said to him, I said, Hassan, I don't think we're supposed to be here. He says, It's all right. I've told him you're a doctor. <laughs> We left. Doctor, do you concur? Yeah, I, uh, I need to get left, out of here. <laughs> yeah, we left very quickly. My goodness. Wow. Um, you know, you had mentioned um, that experience, of course, some of the other experiences. Now a professor at SIU, you still feel the need to go back to these remote regions. You're still giving back in places like Kenya. And Are you visiting those areas, those regions of the world? I, uh, I, uh, you know, tr travel is, uh, is, is a, something that everybody should do. Mm -hmm. Uh, not not just the Paris or, or Rome, which which I, I have been to, um, and uh, but uh, th places like Albania and uh, Montenegro and uh, Kosovo and mm -hmm. uh, uh, these other places, it, it really uh, is is a wonderful opportunity to 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 meet people from those places and see how other people live, see how lucky we are. Exactly. Yes. We turn on the tap and we drink the water. Yeah. You can't do that in most of the right, world. Right. We don't appreciate that. Now, and being at the university, we have hundreds and we have over a thousand international students. And we make friends with people there and then we get the chance to go and go back and see their country, Nepal. Uh, I've, I've been to over 60 countries. Wow. Wow. Yeah. By this little business known as journalism, I guess. There are stories journal to be told and people to meet. Right. I just love that you kept in contact with some people you met there and and know their families now yeah. and is it one of those things where you email does he email email them? email is email has changed changed there. Facebook. Yes. I was looking at my <laughs> Facebook last night and if you were just to look at the pictures on my Facebook, you would not you know, of course my name kind of gives it away, but you would not guess my race. Wow. Because wow. there's such uh, a mixture of, that's awesome. of, 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 of that is people. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, travel uh, uh, is, is it, uh, Mark Twain said, I think, uh, travel is, is, is fatal to bigotry and, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so forth. It, 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 it really helps to, to know other people. Absolutely. And uh, I've, taught in, uh, I've taught in Africa, I've taught in Uganda uh, as a Fulbright uh, senior specialist. And to, to meet those students that would travel all day and uh, to get to get to school, sure. who would uh, uh, when you gave them a textbook, they'd share it with somebody else yeah. and read it. And, and things that we take for granted. Things yeah. that we take for granted. You know? They really hold yeah. hold near and dear. Yeah. Well, your story is a remarkable one. Thank yes. you so much for sharing it. Was there any one thing that you wanted to point out that maybe we didn't ask you about? No, not really. Not really. I, uh, uh, I enjoyed being here this morning. Yeah. I would love to have like three or four hours to have coffee with you sometime. <laughs> I bet you've got incredible stories. Yeah. Well, he writes about it. Yes. So, you know, you I can just pick up a, yeah. <laughs> the book or the <laughs> exactly. Facebook page. Or... Again, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Nice to be here. And we'll be right back. So my dad came here in the early 50s and started. My name is John Smith. My brother Terry and I have Smith Dairy Farm. And we're producers of milk for Prairie Farms Dairy. And we're outside at 4.30 in the morning. Cows need fed 365 days a year and you learn the mannerisms of each animal. You learn who they are. Prairie Farms, they depend on us to be finished milking at a time when the truck's going to come to get the milk. We're all one big team. Proudly farmer owned. It's part of what we've been raised to do. Prairie Farms. We're spieling it in our Southside Lumber Kitchen, brought to you by Prairie Farms. We love Prairie Farms. We love this stuff. I mean, I'm already hooked on the smell. Flying Swine. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a sensation. Yeah, uh, that's what we're hoping for. We're just now getting started. Uh, I've been doing on this uh, for about seven years now. Yeah. Um, and then I decided to go to culinary school. 
and I learned how to perfect it. So what it did was it just taught me that how to break down a recipe to the point where you can repeat it over and over and go as high as from one person to 100 people. Okay. And, and you do it just using math. That's it. Joe Shaw? Uh -huh. Does that, that's right. right. Joe Shaw. We like Shaw. that name. Shaw. You, know, you were telling us, too, that you had your recipe out. And I'm like, hide it, hide it. And you're like, no, no secrets. You're going to have a, a website mm -hmm. that's going to have all your recipes. Right, theflyingswine.com. Uh, okay. We're going to put out a bunch of different recipes. I've got six that we're getting ready to release right now. And they're just all basic recipes that um, we use the rub in. Obviously, we want to use the rub in every single yes, one of them. Yes, yes. Uh, but a lot of them are just something so that people can be happy doing their food. Yes. And that's sort of my goal. That's the whole reason why I did the rub in the first place is because I want the everyday average cook to be able to do something that seems spectacular when in reality it was just you know, a little bit of effort and, and a good ingredient. Yeah. Now your rub can go on all meats? It can go on all meats. Scrambled eggs, meat. it can go on this and meats. that, you know, a cake it, and this and that. It's, it's not a joke. That really That's is true. what we put Seriously. it on. Seriously. We oh, put yeah. it on uh, Everything. mac and cheese, which is one of our recipes that we're going to have on our website. Wow. Mac and cheese, you smoke the chicken with the rub on it, and then at the end you take... Slap your mom and kick your dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then at the end you take and uh, combine some breadcrumbs, some Parmesan cheese powder, and the rub, and you just sprinkle it on top, and there's your crust. So. Nice. Could you hand me that real quick? Nice. Yes. I want to look at that as we talk. You know, um, you can go ahead and start the process because okay. Julie and I like to eat, and if we don't get to cooking, okay. we won't have yeah. anything to. Well, right. I mean, we. All right, well, I go over there. Um, what I do is I take um, one uh, pound of pork, ground pork, and one pound of ground chicken. You can use turkey if you want, whatever's cheaper. How about that? And really, what I've found out is that if you were to take uh, pork loin and uh, boneless skinless chicken breast and you just take a pound cube it up and then you grind that in your food processor oh, you don't wow. have to actually use a grinder mm -hmm. it does the same thing you're just breaking the uh, fibrous membranes and that's it and you just combine that in there one pound each Mm -hmm. creates two pounds and you can get about well six burgers out of it nice. and they're big wow. thick burgers they're Those not are little bitty burgers. skinny things so yeah. no. um, we don't like little bitty skinny things in, yeah. no we I don't in anything no yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't hide well <laughs> so. uh, you got to question a chef who's like you know this right yeah oh yeah tiny tiny yeah, chef that's unethical yeah you but I, I love your story you've been hooked on this type of food this type of culinary art since you were itty bitty tell yeah. us that story um, i was i would say i estimating about six years old we okay. went on a field trip at Grant School in Benton and uh, we went to this backyard um, it was just on the same side of town as, as, mm -hmm. as uh, Grant School and we just went to a backyard all of us and we gathered around this big backyard and there was a bunch of old folks and, and sorry if you're an old folk but um, Those old folk I wasn't know how looking to cook. at you when I said that oh my uh, did you see he was looking at me it was I, me today you wasn't at me no he not. wasn't it was it was me it was me no. the old folk um, because Angie I wasn't looking at you really <laughs> really um, that, so, and just for that, she's eating two burgers that's right. by I mean, you know what? Yeah, I brought plenty. <laughs> uh, so, and it, what was really cool about it was that they were cooking in an actual big old, like you would see on witch shows, you know, yeah, like cool. in the old. The old, old black old time, kettle. A big black cauldron kettle. And yeah. they had it over an open flame. Yeah. And uh, they just asked us all. They passed a little plate around and it had some sauce that I'd never tasted before. It had apple in it. It had pork fat in it. And, I mean, it was really just like no health concerns whatsoever, nice. which to me was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was hooked. I really was. I awesome. was just hooked from then on, and I've always tried to replicate it. And that's actually one of the sauces we're working on right now to come out with the all-purpose rub. Very good. We're just going to use everything, and we're going to try to tie everything in. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, what, what I did um, was I went ahead and poured in two-thirds cup of uh, rolled oats. Oats. Uh, oats. Do you add oats. oats to your meat? Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah. Processed oats, just they absorb too much water and they dry out your food. Okay. So anything processed will do that. Okay. Um, then we add in, these are dried minced onions. If mm -hmm. you want to use fresh minced onions, that's absolutely perfect. Okay. These just happen to be in my cupboard. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, so I mix How those How much in. of that did you? Oh, I'm sorry. That was uh, about two tablespoons. A smidgen. Okay. You're just a smidgen just and a little bit. And then okay. we have the uh, all-purpose rub. That's a lot of rub. That's it, it's, baby. It's, it's two-thirds of a cup. Okay. But it... Can it, I smell? Yes, absolutely. You can take a pinch of taste. Don't smell. Don't sniff too hard. What? <laughs> yeah. That smells good. That's really good. Um, and then we just go ahead and dump that in there. Nice. Two thirds cup. And now then, you won't tell us what's in that recipe. No, that no, one. Okay. That one is a secret. Yeah. I will tell you this: it has sugar in it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that's on the back, it'll tell you. Good deal. Um, and then one egg. Always break an egg on a flat surface too, by the way. Why? If you break it on a corner, it, ch it tends to chip the pieces inward, and that's what falls into your food. <gasps> that's that crunchy stuff in my mouth. Darn it. <laughs> now we know. Then we do just regular house ketchup, just do about a tablespoon worth. 
just to add a little liquidity to it. Okay. Then we do some, uh, I like brown mustard because it just tends to go with barbecue better. Yeah, yeah. And uh, about a tablespoon of that as well. Okay. Then about a tablespoon of Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Yeah. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Yeah. That one stuff, yeah. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. And uh, we what just mix that, that kind in. Of a Man, people come, listen, they come running when they smell this, the onions, the pepper. You can't keep them away. No. That's that smell. No. And then in order to mix this up, all I do is I just do like a swish method where I just oh, sort swish? of. Swish? Swish. A swish, yeah. Squish it's, or it's, swish? It's Polish. Both. <laughs> and uh, mm. so I just squish this around just to make sure I blend everything together. Okay. And then uh, hey, you usually got, you got a bunch of rub over there. And I get oh, that he'll guy. get it. He'll so get it. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he's gonna get the rub. Don't worry about it. Um, and then this is pretty much. I, honestly, this is a lot like making a meatloaf, mm -hmm. but with barbecue. Could you go ahead and and you can oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. I, I use those. Uh, those, as you see on TV, those meatloaf pans, yeah. I love using Do those. Do they for, work? I use them for this, and I use them for making bread, because they're excellent for making homemade bread. Because not all that stuff you see on TV works. No. No, no. Except this. this okay. This does. Okay. I mean, I'm so impressed. Did you just hear he says, when I make bread? I mean. Are you married? They <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's what a lucky girl. Darn it. Oh, I'm telling you. No, I, I'm lucky. Aw, oh, see? And I bet you've never looked at her and said, I wasn't talking about you when I said old. <laughs> 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 well, this is, you know what? We're delighted to have this guy here. Listen to what he did. His whole shipment's coming in today from St. Louis. Shipment is there. You're supposed to go pick it up. I'm glad you said that word. <laughs> shipment, okay? He cancels it to come on the show. He's like, I'll oh get it tomorrow. Gosh, I'll get it tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What about the people waiting for the, the shipment? Well, we've got a bunch of local people that have really supported us and really just, I mean, beyond belief supported us. And, uh, you know, we, we've tried our best to thank them. And, and we're going to do two things. We're not in retail stores yet. Um, that's something that we're, you know, it's a goal. It's sure. something that we want to do. Absolutely. Can they buy this now at the restaurant? Not, no, not yet. Um, we are actually getting ready to, I believe, next week. It's going to go live on Amazon. And uh -huh. then anybody that sees me, once I get the shipment. Shipment. <laughs> once I get that, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'll sell it to them right then and there. Nice. It'll be cheaper if they buy it from me. What yeah. does this cost? Uh, that, uh, if they buy it for me, it's $13. Okay. If they buy it on Amazon, it's seventeen fifty. Right. You get that our, whole shipping charge. Really, yeah. Really, oh, yeah, we're good. Hey, Jesus is like. Yeah, you want, it, you want it to sing at you. If, you. if it doesn't, then it's just not hot enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can only fit about two of these at a time in there. But, because they're so big. Right. And, and usually I'll just take and smash a thumb down in there because they'll swell up a little bit. But the great, great thing about using pork and chicken is unlike beef, it's not full of fat. Okay. It's really pork and chicken are lean meat. Loin and, and chicken breasts are lean. Pork. I must pork be using is, the wrong one when I do sausage. If you use, if you use that much grease in the pan yeah. when you're done, okay. Yeah. And uh, the like I said, the really good thing is that when you put this on like an open grill, mm -hmm. like I uh, have done numerous times, when you put it on an open grill, you don't get the flare ups as much because you don't have as much fat dripping down onto the coals. I can't wait to taste it. These things hardly ever lose any of their size. Wow. So what you see here is pretty much what you're going to get when you get done. Is that the oats? The oats will no, not allow it to shrink. It's the meat. Itself. It is the meat. It's I've a leaner meat, burger. so it doesn't it doesn't just dissolve and, and lose the juice and the fat. Nice. Everything else. The reason why I put the oats in there is not only for texture, but also it absorbs that moisture. Okay. And it holds on to it. So it's it's almost like putting crackers. You could put crackers in here. That's oh, right. perfectly fine. Great. Uh, panko crumbs are really good with this. Okay. Um, because they just absorb the moisture and they hold it longer. Yeah. Can I ask a silly yeah. question? Go for it. Um, I guess the salt and pepper's in here, right? Uh -huh. Should you add more salt? Probably not. If you're it's using... to taste. Salt okay. and pepper's always been one of those things it's to taste. Okay. No matter what food you're making, it's always to taste. Okay. And, if you, and if you wanted something more, you know, go for it. Like at the end, if somebody wanted to put mustard or ketchup on there, oh, granted yeah. it's in there, but it's also something you can put on at the end. Great. Well, that's what we want to do. We want to taste. So when we come back, we're going to do just that. Stay tuned. The flying swine, when you have, you know what, this, this, when you have this, you have everything. You don't really need anything else. You know, I thought it was an all-purpose rub. Well, it yeah. is all-purpose, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it goes on everything. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. Macaroni and cheese. Yes, yes. Can't wait. Chef, we're going we're gonna, to um, quiz you on your own packaging. Okay. okay we're going to see how well you know it. Joe Shaw is with us here and, and making up some, some unbelievable burgers, and I know that you're going to question, as you always do, you're like, Angie, will your mouth open that big? <laughs> yes, it will. Okay, listen. So, uh, how many years journey to get this just right? Seven. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, an all-purpose swine, uh, flying swine rub, weather on, list your meats there. You can uh, put it on. Weather on, uh, 
pork shoulder. Pork, <laughs> yeah, pork shoulder, brisket. chicken, uh, pork steak. Um, brisket. Brisket. Ribs. Ribs. Burgers. Burgers. Fish. Fish. Did you see that episode? What was it? Uh, <laughs> Forrest Gump. I mean, we got shrimp on the barbie, yeah. shrimp on the stick, yeah. and shrimp, shrimp. Okay, but don't stop with just meat. Right. Uh, we also can put it on, uh, one of the recipes our friends came up with was uh, fried dill pickles. Nice. Oh. You just mix a little bit of it in there, nice. and it just coats it just right, and you get that little yin and yang of the sweet and sour. Oh, Is yeah. it something that you, you can sprinkle on after? Or you Everything. Should, Absolutely. Okay. What, actually, the reason for the size of the package is one pound. And Oof. most most companies, when they sell a seasoning or anything like that, they sell it in about six to eight ounces. Oh yeah. The reason why we did one pound was very specific. It was you could do two slabs of ribs both before and after you smoke. Right. And so you could do an entire pork shoulder with that. So you could take and just sprinkle on some. Okay. The big question is something uh -oh. we haven't asked you: uh -oh. flying swine. Why? Where'd you get that flying swine? Uh, you know, it really, barbecue is mostly about pig. Yeah. I mean, that's what, at least in Southern Illinois it is. You know, Texas, it's brisket. But yeah. here, it's mostly about pig. And, um, you know, it just, to me, I love pigs. I think they're the Cute. cool, they're one of the coolest animals. My wife loves pigs, too. She'll make that oh. Um, <clears throat> now, this is something you got right after culinary school, you Well, said? I got it my first uh, year in culinary school. And <laughs> what it says shoulder. is, yeah, it's got everything on oh, there. Right. And what it says What's underneath. What's the butt say? Ham. Ham. Okay. And what it says underneath is fumé haché manger, which See, means it's, it's, off. I know. It's, it's French for what? Smoke, chop, eat. Smoke, chop, eat. Boom. Say it again in French. Fumé haché manger. Oh, and he cooks too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I love that about you, Jean yeah. That's what I said to her. I was. That's what I said to my wife. I was like, hey, fumé haché manger. She was oh, like, was I'm yours. I'm yours, baby. Uh -huh. So. Okay, flyingswine.com, right? Mm -hmm. Theflyingswine.com. Here, here, it's your swine. turn. Okay. We're all over Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. We, we're uh, getting our YouTube channel up. Um, you awesome. know, we're gonna do. We're gonna actually demonstrate recipes on how to Good. do it. We we just want people to use it and and to be that. You know, give them a shortcut to being you know that master cook or that master Absolutely. pit master that they always wanted to be. Joe Shaw, you're fantastic. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Appreciate Hope you guys it. like it. We'll be right back. We're excited about the opportunities that are offered at Marion First Church of God. Everyone is always welcome. Wednesday nights, we gather for a meal at 5.30 and then have Bible study and prayer time at 6.30. On Friday nights at 6 p.m., a very contemporary service. For Sunday mornings, we gather at 9 o'clock for Sunday school and 10 a.m. is our blended worship experience. We just encourage you to give us a visit and be a part of God's family that meets there. There's a reason why so many students are choosing John A. Logan College. It's because we make your future our priority number one. At John A. Logan College, it's all about you. John A. Logan College is about the students. At John A. Logan College, it's all about you. At John A. Logan College, it is all about you. Because here, it's all about you. Visit JALC.edu. The Spiel presents You're On, 100% original new music. Hi folks, we're the Swamp Tigers from Carbondale, Illinois. We're going to play a song for you of ours called Lost, Lonesome, and Alone. Ready? Well, I went out to find my baby. She was nowhere to be found. I looked and I looked all around Somebody told me she's on the other side of town Get that woman off my 
been three years and I still don't have a clue. I sit in the dark and I wonder what I'm to do. I wonder if this pain will ever end. Guitar in an empty bottle, my only friend. Put on Since my baby decided to roam. Amazing. Thank you. And welcome back to the Spiel. Another great you're on with the Swamp Tigers from Carbondale. Welcome, guys. Hey. Thanks for having us. When something like this enters the room, you have my attention. You know what? You just like it because there's a picture of you on it. Look at I you. I know, in the wow. scantily clad <laughs> swimwear. Yeah, this is neat. I mean, it, it, it's vintage, obviously. Definitely, yes, okay. yes. Okay. How old would you think? It is a 1962. <gasps> oh! So nice. still young. And it came over on the boat, and it was a this, and what's the story behind it? Um, actually, I found it in a closet in Fairfield. Um, there was an old man that was spitting in a cup of peaches, and he said, well, if you're interested, you got to pull it out of the closet. And so, here been you go. have ever since. Oh, yeah. You know what? Awesome. They make them now, of course. They're beautiful, they're new, but they don't sound like this. Absolutely. Wow. They don't look like this anymore either. That's true. It's a, it's a doghouse face. Do you have a case for it? Uh, I do, but it definitely doesn't look like it anymore. No. Okay. No, it. that's what gives it its character. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that is not. And this one right here, you just been stirring up a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Stirring, <laughs> stirring, and I'm going to use it as a back scratcher. Oh, yeah. Say, this is. I, you've just got. You, you got rhythm in your soul, rhythm in your heart. I can tell. Talk about this instrument and your desire to play. Well, this is a snare drum, and I've been a percussionist my whole life. And actually, I bought this snare drum from Mr. Blake Bramlett, and this is a 1940. One, 40, oh. 42 Ludwig yes. snare drum. So this hey. one's even got more age on it than that. Yeah, listen all you little, uh, th those artists out there who think they have to have the latest, the greatest. <laughs> Did you, the sound coming from these things here? Yeah. Amazing, amazing indeed. And then of course over there, the lead guy, I told you you were very believable. And you're like, it's all made up, it's all, oh, it's yeah, all a yeah, farce. Yeah. <laughs> if I was singing about believable things, I'd sing about Taxes Star, Star and, Trek and yeah. my kids. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say too it. that whoever comes out to one of your shows, your concerts, whatever you call it, if they're not patting their foot, they're legally dead. I mean, my whole the whole staff is going crazy. Well, no, we go Just, for that. I mean, we go to get young people like it, older folks can dance to it, they know the songs, and we have a very. I mean, we have people that come and see us all the time. Yeah, and they, I would. They, I, I don't know why they keep coming. They hear the same songs every time. You know time, why? Because it makes coming. you happy. It makes well, you good. just do this right here. And how long have you been together? We've been together uh, as a band for about six years or seven years, uh, and Chad has been with us for a year. This, mar this month, well, wow, you know what? How'd so. you find him? Because he fits like a glove. Oh, he does. He's a friend of ours who's been playing in Carbondale, uh, the scene for a long time, and we needed someone who could just slide right in. And I mean, it was it was a seamless transition. I bet. I seamless. Bet. Yeah. So it's happy, been happy to get the gig. <laughs> well, we were gigs happy to get you. Right? Yeah, yeah, gigs. gigs. Are good. Um, what do you guys foresee? What do you want to do? Are you just having fun or are we actually trying to go somewhere and do something with this? We have no delusions of grandeur. Okay. <laughs> we are uh, loving to get to play music and make money doing it. We make more money here than we would being in the city. We're not trying to get famous. We don't yeah. care. You know what? That People is an know. incredible band name. Delusions of Grandeur. It is a good. <laughs> oh my gosh! It, 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 it no, fits a lot that, of it fits a lot of it, different it, bands. Isn't that great? If anybody uses it, yeah, she, wants, <laughs> she wants royalties. I mean, but here's the thing: we've had a lot of your on segments here, and just the originality coming from your sound and such. You know, there's there's somebody out there that that needs to hear them and, and see them. Would you agree? I agree because Marty Stewart and his rockabilly sound, and you guys remind me so much. 
of that band. And everybody loves that band. Number one, we can understand the words you're saying. Yeah. Uh, it's a great story. Yeah. And it just, it does make you happy. It does make you move. Well, more than anything, and I think what Marty's about too, is just preserving, yes. you know, and, and it's kind of our cultural heritage around here. It's just preserving traditional country music and kind of rock, you know, and rockabilly's, it's 60 years yes. old now. And yes. so, and this type of music, you know, unless somebody's playing them, so we don't really, yeah. It, and, and ours isn't, we're not strictly traditional. There are a lot of people who do a very strictly traditional kind of rockabilly yeah. thing, and that's not us. Yeah. Um, but we just do okay. what we do and hope people You know like what, two it, so. years of our show, lots of great artists, everyone that comes on, of course we have the best. Um, we've never heard the sound. Is there any other sound like yours in Southern Illinois? Not really. There were a couple, there was a, a band that Blake and I owned that did Western Swing, and then we have a, a friend who does Kind of rockabilly, but it's more a lot more rock and roll. Okay. Um, but I don't think I think that's why we ha we play yeah. hundred yeah, shows a year. Is, yeah. So good. Yeah, 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 because we're, we're the only ones. How could it, folks so. find where you are? We're on the internet. We're on Facebook. I think it's facebook.com slash Swamp Tigers. What, why YouTube? Swamp Tigers? I mean, you don't see a lot of those. You the, know, the, I, there was there's a documentary on PBS maybe, and you can find it in the thrift. There's like a copy you, every, in every thrift store. It's just called Swamp Tigers. And who saw it and went, that's it, that's, that's what we're doing. Our old singer Josh saw it. We were having it, you know, we were having the inevitable band name where you just throw out the stupidest names. It's the hardest part of being in a band is coming up with a name. Not when you just throw out stuff like you said. Delusions of well, grandeur, yeah, yeah. 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 that is incredible. But it's always unintentional. So he was watching them and he called us the next morning. We were like, hey, okay. it works. Yeah. It's, we've been called everything from swamp donkey to swamp <laughs> dog. I would be smacking that yeah. person. And we'll be right back. It's never too early or too late to start considering your future or your spouse or your children or your grandchildren. The Bank of Heron has a terrific customer service staff, a terrific loan staff, and we have a trust department. There's a misnomer that says you have to be extremely wealthy to have a trust. That is totally not true. We are passionate about our customers because we take an active part in their life. It is not just a trust, it is a relationship. These days, video is everywhere. TVs, computers, even your phone. With so many ways to use video to reach your potential audience, it's become an important part of doing business. If you like the commercials you've seen during the spiel, and if your business could benefit from a creative approach to telling your story, with attention-grabbing visuals and thoughtfully executed scripts, perhaps it's time you give Growing Media a call. We'd love to hear from you. What a show, what a show. You know, it's always a show, it's all, because it's reality, it's, yeah. it's real, it's the real deal. I wanna tell people right now who ask me, no, we have no cue cards. None. There's no oh, teleprompter. Well, people really think we have cue cards for this Someone crap? Someone thought that, someone <laughs> won. And no, we have no teleprompter. This is just off the cuff. This is, it's reality. It this is. This is reality TV. It is, it is. We've had a lot of reality stars on this spiel. I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, this is a reminder of one. Do you remember the Nashville Housewives we had? Tina yeah. Brady. Oh man. Beautiful. And you know she what? She made this for me. We're gonna have her on again because her creations are just. Julie wants another amazing. one. Amazing. I yes. want two more. More, Tina. Yes, two more. You have to see her. We are going to go We're to gonna her closet. closet. We're going to spiel it in her closet. Yes, hopefully. Amazing. I think her closet's bigger than my home. Oh, probably. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know her, look her up. She spends a lot of time with, with horses. Yes. When she's not making jewelry. NashvilleBling.com. Nashville. Oh, good memory. That's Thank been you. a long time ago. That I can remember or we saw her. Yeah. No, I, I talk know. to her daily. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Okay, she you wants know, to know what someone, you think about the horseshoe she's wearing that day. I mean, she wears some. She wears some things. heavy, heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. You know what? Here's what you do. Haven't you learned this in life? What? When you find someone that's real influential, rich, <laughs> important, you hang with them. Okay. For those of you who thought she was your friend, it's all a farce. <laughs> it's not real. Okay. That's not true. I love each she's and every one of my on. rich. She's family. clinging. Okay. okay. I mean, we've had some heart throbs. We've had yes. some good looking folks, but I know you were, you were talking about some fun times we've had on the show. And to you, fun equates to, we were able to make fun of Angie. Did you see what she was wearing on this day or that day? I've never said that till this morning. Right. There was the one tablecloth <laughs> that <laughs> the you garbage wore bag. Time that outside the Ryman. That was beautiful. Yeah. Jason pointed that we out. We had many, um, 
goof ups, mini goof ups, like goof ups. How many yeah. times did my eyelash fall off during a, a, a taping? Oh, it looked good. It looked classic. It That's was what classic. it's reality. Yeah. Reality. It's reality. Too. Yep. Stick with us, and it's the real deal. We've got a word. Word of the day. Word of the week. Unparadoned. What? What are you saying at the end? Don't. Donned, unparadoned? Unparagon. Unparagon. Is that Rachel, paramount? You know that that's means. like separated from everybody, everything? Yeah. Okay. Unparagon. Having no paragon or equal. Equal. And you know having what? no equal. Oh. My mom Unless said you're rich. I never had She'd paragon or cooth. I mean, paragon never or had. <laughs> never. No, what does okay. it mean? It means peerless and matchless. You matchless. Know? You have no equal. Wow. I think that about you. I think you stand alone. No, I stand next to you, sweetheart. So you can stand alone. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. Today is, see, it's a reality. You stay tuned because some good stuff happened. You just Ooh, never let's know. Let's do our word. Ready? Yeah. Pair. What is it? Um, I thought you leaned back because my breath was bad. I go, it pair, is. and you go, it what? Is. Unparagon? Unparagon. Un. Un. Unparagoned. Yes. Unparagoned. Gond. Okay. Un. Pair. A. Gond. Way to go with sharing the syllable. Gong. You remember that show? Gong. Gong. We would have totally Unparagoned. been Unparagoned. Unparagoned. Unmatched. Unparalleled. Use it this week. Especially when you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. See you again soon. Folks, I'd like to introduce the band to you. We've got Mr. Blake Bramlett here on the upright bass, Mr. Chad Schaefer on the drums, and I'm Andrew Staff, and we're going to play you another song. It's called Burdens. One, two, three. <laughs> Sunday morning coming down Another endless night of rambling around Another broken bottle Another broken heart Will I ever lay these burdens down? Cast my trouble deep into the Trouble ain't far behind I hope and I pray that one day I'll find Some kind of answer to this thing we call life Will I ever lay these burdens down? Cast my trouble deep into the ground I think it's time to step into the light Time to ease my mind and try to do what's right Won't be easy, nothing ever is Will I ever play these burdens down? Cast my trouble deep into the I'm gonna carry him till I'm six feet underground.